Good afternoon everyone, it's Christine here again and I'm sharing progress on my Roxy Journal of Stitchery on my secret garden and secret door. So this is the second prompt um, and we've done three videos I think working on this piece and so I've now completed the brick wall with the lattice work and the secret door and added some additional components. So when we last chatted, I was working with you on adding French knots and um, daisy stitch. I've then just done some over stitch on the other ones around the outside and done the French knots with the three different colors of tapestry wool. I have added the garden twine vines. Um, I decided to use the garden twine because it gives the vines some really great three-dimensional effect. Now I'm pretty sure on the camera you'd be able to see that they're actually sort of sticking out and wending off, off the page, which is fabulous. And then I've done some tiny little wool felt leaves cut out of wool felt and I've stitched them first onto the garden twine and into the fabric. And then I've come up through them and done three little stitches, one up under up and then back down them to create the three little stitches down the middle of each of them and so i then just spaced them out so they're sort of pointing out different ways up the vine i decided not to go really crazy with my vine like i was contemplating um, down here because i wanted to still be able to see the lattice work because i think that's a really lovely feature and i really like that that lace lace work I then also added a little hummingbird um, bead or button. It has a little hole in it so you can sew it on. So I put up that up there. And I'd mentioned last time that I wanted to make a little nest. So let me see if I can show you. I think you'll be able to see inside the little nest um, are some little eggs made out of pearl, little pearl shaped seed beads. And I made the nest out of the leftover thread from pulling off the, the side, like when you pull off the bits um, along here. But in fact, it was from, from this edge down here, um, which we'll get to in a moment. And so I sort of rolled it all up between my fingers and then just started putting in stitches around the edges to hold it all together um, and just kept sewing it till it became a sort of a cohesive um, stitched piece and then shaped it into that little nest by kind of gathering the stitches a bit as I went around the edges and pulling it together. And then I stitched the nest onto the fabric. And then once it was on the fabric, I then worked out how I could fit the three um, seed little beads in and stitch those in. So that's a really cute little, um, little bird's nest up on the lattice work. I then added some additional, and I just used actually some watercolor pens this time. Got them here behind me. So I used the, this is a metallic brush pen, so in fact it's not a watercolour but a metallic brush pen and then these watercolour, I just used the green, I think yeah I used that green out of that pack to colour in at the top of the brick fence as though it's got grass growing out of it. Um, or the brick wall, not a brick fence, it's definitely a brick wall. And that way it gives the effect of being quite sort of, yeah, overgrown and adding to the, adding to the vines and the little bird having made his nest there. So the second piece, which I now feel free to do with Sarah having told us that a bird is not going to be a future prompt, so I can do my little robin because this is the secret garden inspired by the secret garden book. And so I want to have a little robin sitting down in this foreground piece that I've added today. So I've just stitched on to the other piece, which was, that's the back of the other piece where I folded under and stitched down the tree lace, which had been dyed green. And so I've added on this under piece of, it's some sort of woven fabric, probably originally a tapestry. I think this one came from the re reverse art truck or it might have been from Nana's collection or it might be from some other random place as well. I'm just going to cut off those bits that are slightly slightly out of camera. Try not to drop them on my work. 
area and then I put over the top this um, over the top piece definitely came from the verse art truck and was just a very small little remnant only slightly bigger than this in that I only um, cut off a tiny little bit at the side um, and it, as you can see it was even sort of torn down there but I've decided to use that to kind of create some foreground um, and background in this piece here because this will all be kind of looking up the piece I'm thinking this will be at the bottom of my down the garden path or possibly up the garden path I'm not sure what I'm going to title it yet we'll see how that evolves and then I want to have my little red robin robin red breast sitting down here with a key from my grandpa's collection so I am thinking out of I pulled out sort of some of my favorite keys I'm thinking this one's probably going to be too big for it I do quite like that key with the three little dots but I think I'm erring towards this little one because I reckon that's going to be about the perfect size to be sitting in the foreground and what I'm planning to do in the foreground around the little bird is always have too much stuff and don't remember to get all the bits that I want to show you is to use some different bits of thread probably with a bit more brown but to add some real texture in the foreground and to have the key sort of nestling amongst it and then to have my little robin a red breast um, down in the foreground with the key and probably have the key a little little ways away from him so that's the thinking and Robin Redbreast will obviously have legs. So let's talk a bit about Robin now. I'll put aside back the key back where it belongs, put this away. And again, these pieces were just off the frayed edges um, where I was sort of pulling it down to get this nice um, frayed edge. And so I just keep those bits and pieces, not forever, but if I can use them in a project. But I'm thinking I probably need a bit more of the brown. But what I love with this piece of fabric that I've used is it gives us a bit of an effect and really draws the eye sort of up towards the bush and up towards the, the secret door here with its, its key. And I think the key then being down here will just be absolutely perfect. You probably can't see where I was pointing up, um, up towards the door. So let me just show you. So yeah, this sort of greeny bit in the middle just um, was the perfect match for that sort of central segment in it. Now I know from a couple of your comments on previous videos, some of you have gone, zoom in, zoom in, I wanna see the details. So I'm trying to get the, the right balance of being zoomed out enough that I don't go off camera, but being zoomed in enough that you can see the details. So continue to let me know if you need um, me to do something a bit different. I'm still getting used to this whole gig. So I'm gonna try a scrappy stitchy bird today and I'm gonna do it with you because I figured, hey, why not? Do it on camera, it might work well, it might not, but we'll learn from the process. So I had a look on the internet for some different images of birds and then just did a bit of sketching first on paper and then um, onto just this old piece of pillowcase. Um, I started out with a slightly smaller size and then ended up with a bird about, it's just slightly bigger as you can see here. And I cut this bird out. This bird did originally have its little legs drawn onto it um, and I'll still use that to kind of get the positioning once it's in there. So I want it to kind of be sitting on the fabric a bit like a bit like that and I'm thinking of having him sitting along where I've um, stitched this other fabric down so that's almost like the little foreground area and then if I was to be then um, I'll do this afterwards but yeah I can then put the sort of leaf litter and other things around him in situ. So I was thinking if I had a bit of a pattern to work with, it will actually help me um, when I'm then going to be laying a range of scrappy bits of fabric um, to make the wing and the tail and the head um, and the body. So I've cut out a few bits to start with, but I'll probably have to trim them as I go, go along. And I've just used again um, some of my fabric scraps from the reverse art truck. So these are um, bits that come off fabric samples and I just picked out some colors. Um, I got a white piece, which is what I used for the breast area. And then I just got a whole range of other, other pieces, particularly where there was a stripe. I followed that stripe up through it. That one's got a bit of a check, checky bit in it, but I thought that could add to it. And I've got some others that I can go to if I, if I need them. In fact, I just noticed I've got this one as well. 
And then I was thinking, how do I create that little blush that you see on uh, the breast of a red robin? Um, it's not a really intense, it's sort of like a reddy blush on the whitey feathers. And I was having a look through, I got down a whole lot of my um, sort of ready, ready, oops, use that, um, my little box because I sat something on top of it has fallen on the floor, but we'll clean that up later. Everyone is okay. So I was thinking, how do I create that little red breast blush? And I was having a look through my collection as I showed you at those other red bits. And I ended up thinking, oh, this bag, this sort of organza, I guess, bag, shimmery red, might be just the perfect thing for this because when you put it across the white, it just gives you that, that sense of a blush of colour rather than being a really intense. So I'm thinking, let's use that. And what I'm going to do today is use my YooHoo glue stick, just the regular, it's called, no, no, stark and schnell, or strong and fast, or fort and rapid, or stark and schnell. So there you go, strong and fast is our version of it. And I don't generally use glue when I'm stitching. I'll either use pins or just put in a bit of tacking stitch to hold them in place. But today, because there's going to be so many elements, I think it's just going to help us out. So let's give it a go and see how we go. So I'm just going to start by putting a bit um, let me actually make sure that I've got this up the right way where I want it. Yes, putting a bit of glue just where I want the, the breast bit to be. And because we're going to be stitching, I don't have to be trying to get it um, totally, totally perfect. Um, I just need it to stick and hold while we get ourselves ready to do the stitching. And so I can then just cut around it it down to the same shape of the rest of the breast piece which I'd cut out. So I cut the breast just so it sort of covers that area the beak's going to be there. Let me just check yep we're still on camera. Great. Um, so that will be right for that and then I'm thinking the order and I've just been toying with what's the order that I need to put them down. I'm thinking we go like that, like that, the little head, head piece. And then we'll have something. This will be the sort of wingy, wing area. But we'll have to obviously shape them a little bit more. And then we'll have some tail, tail pieces. So I think the tail pieces will go under, under the wingy pieces. We almost don't need that piece that's under underneath it um, and that will need to come up a little bit so the head covers that area but it will look something something like that but a bit bit neater so we'll keep that piece over there get rid of these little piecey pieces and then the legs will be coming down so we'll probably have him sitting up a little bit so I think the first step for me will be to just um, stick down my little shape let's just have that so we sort of get the right positioning because we want that area to be just a bit more down and the head to just be a little bit up. So I'm going to chuck a bit of, chuck, no, I'm going to stick a little bit of the Yoohoo glue on. Again, not too much. Um, the good thing about the Yoohoo is it doesn't make it go really stiff like if you used a PVA or something like that. So I just need enough just to get a bit of a stick down. It will also just stop the sort of fray edges, but I'm actually not really, in fact, I actually want a little bit of fraying on the pieces because it just gives you that feathery, feathery effect. So I think that's probably about right. I might need to just shift him up a bit so he's got a bit of room for his, for his legs. Yeah, I reckon that's pretty nice. So it's not super, super stick down, but stuck down, um, but it's, it's enough. We shouldn't be using massive scissors for that. Should be using my little, little scissors. So I hope you're all having a lovely day or a lovely evening. Apologies, I hadn't given you my greeting as yet. I just got very excited about getting stuck into this. We've had friends over for lunch today, um, and so I've been busy getting ready for the celebration. So yeah, it was Dad's Dad's birthday. So I had a bunch of people over and made lots of yummy. Yummy food. I think nothing too extravagant, but just a nice yummy lunch to celebrate. And okay, order, order, order. What are we doing? So I think I said I'll start 
with this piece, which will be just covering, which way is it going to go? Well laid plans of mice and men. There we go. Let's get that little fringy. This one virtually got mostly covered anyway, so I'm not too, too worried about it. I reckon something like that, and then the other piece will cover it. Sorry, I've still got my squeaky chair. I really must do something about that. And so I've drawn on this um, fabric with a friction pen. You can just buy them usually at your local supermarket. Um, I just got this from Wool Woolworths, Woolies in Australia, Pilot Friction, F-R-I-X-I-O-N, ball. Um, and you can use it on fabric. And then if you apply heat, like with an iron, or I just use the hairdryer because it's closest to my craft room, and you apply heat and the design will disappear. In this case, it's going to, the design's going to be fully, or the drawing's going to be fully covered, so I'm not going to have to remove it. But if I um, took this in and put the hairdryer on this right now, um, that would all disappear. Some people report that they get some, sometimes get it coming back. I think that would only happen in colder climates. I've certainly never had that, that experience. So I think then the next bit that we'll just um, stick on will be our little Robin a red breast. Let's do that one. Okay. There we go. And then probably our little little headpiece like that. So as I say, this is my first um, time doing doing a bird this way. I've been long admiring the sort of scrappy style birds. Um, a few people I know, well not, not that I know, but a few people I follow um, on Instagram do them. And so I've been wanting to give it a go myself. So do, what do we think? Does that one go? I think that does make a nice lower bit and I think you can see there um, I'm wondering if I need to cut any of the fringing off here or does that just meld in I think that probably does just meld into the head quite well maybe I'll just take a smidgeroo I'll take a few more bits of thread out I think and then I might just trim a tiny bit off there. but yeah I like that sort of sweeping sweeping shape but it is all meant to be very sort of scrappy, so I don't think it has to be absolutely, absolutely perfect. So yeah, I think I'll stick that one down. I think I probably do need to just trim a little bit of this tail area off there. So it's sticking to me because they've got the got the Yoohoo glue on them. And the Yuhu also dries pretty fast, so it's pretty good to use. Um, I think I was actually meant to glue that one on the other way. Oh, well, let's let's smear all the glue off, and we'll. I think I was meant to go this way with that one, wasn't I? Yeah, that looks much better. Oops. Okay, let's try it that way. So it's Sunday here, and as I mentioned earlier, we'd had people over. For lunch today. And what did we do yesterday? I'm trying to even remember. Saturday. What did we do? Oh we went to um went to Mount Martha to the dog beach down there early in the day because it was a very hot day, 35 degrees I think, or maybe possibly more in Melbourne. So we got down there, got down there early to beat the heat. Now I think this one I probably need to actually pull some more little bitsy bits off it. I don't know if it will just totally disintegrate. Maybe I just need to trim it a little more. I don't know if you can see that. I might just move it across on the camera so you can see. I'm just going to possibly trim a bit more like that. And again, I'm going to be doing over stitches to kind of hold the bits in place. So it's okay if a few bits are a bit bit loose um, although some of these fabrics did kind of just um, disintegrate a bit as I was chopping them up I might just tip those a bit out of the way 
to take the hair, put these bits in the little bin, excuse my arm. Okay, so what length do we want and what sort of shaping on the end do we want on this one? I might take, I might still take another piece out of it and just do another smidgey of trimming. I might just get my little bin down here, it might be easier. I reckon. So when we stick that down, I think. Yeah, yeah, I didn't end up with lots of little thready bits on my on my glue. So yeah, always um, be prepared to have a go with these sorts of um, things. If you see something, just go, oh, how how might they have done that? How could I improvise with the materials that I've got, like I did with the the robin red breast down here. Um, and you're not having to do it exactly. It doesn't have to exactly resemble um, what you're what you're working on, or as in what you're seeing. Yours can be your own your own version. In fact, it's better if it's your own version. You don't want to copy other people's work, but you can definitely take inspiration from other people's work and try and use the materials that you have. That's my real sort of challenge. In fact, I've just been um, doing a big sort of my craft room again I think I said I was doing a sort of it around Christmas time but um, which I did but then I was just I had everything sort of in recycled boxes and they're all different sizes so it was kind of hard to to stack things on each other and it was all just getting a bit a bit out of control and a bit hard to hard to manage and things were sort of cascading down. Although as you heard, I still had another little box that I brought up from downstairs just fall down then um, before. And so yeah, I got all these plastic tubs from Bunnings and did a big sort of the room. I still feel like that piece is a bit dominant. So I think I do need to keep pulling some more bits off it. Let's see how we go. I don't wanna pull the middle bits out. I just wanna have these longer bits come to out a bit and then I might just give it another little haircut. Just wanting to have lots of different little elements to give the sort of sense of different coloured um, feathers, that variation. And I do like these bits with their little fringiness on them. I think that's perfect. Maybe I'll go like that. Yeah, I think that's nice. I just wonder if I need to shape the little tail piece a bit differently. Maybe I just need to shape it a bit more like that. Yeah, I think that will be good. So I've still got the little fringy bits under that and then that can just come over. Great. So I might put my bin back again, just tip these bits in there. Still got my little trusty rolly device use wherever I get random bits of fluff. Just one of those clothes rollers, very, very handy to have in the craft room. Squeaky chair again. Right. Okay. We're going to just stick this like this. Oh no, he's come unstuck off the page. So it shows that you who doesn't probably super, super stick maybe on this more fluffy sort of surface. But that's okay. We mainly want these bits stuck down on top. Now, how are we going to approach the tail? I think I probably need to trim those little bits as well. So if we put something like that. Maybe we need to trim that one down a little bit more. And then I wonder which way this would go. Something like that, yeah, good. Can we use this one up a bit more this way? Okay. So it's a little bit fiddly, but it's kind of fun too. Fiddly and fun. So I think that one will need to be trimmed a bit. 
I don't know, I'm not thinking that where the, um, the sample was cut on the edge with its little pinky and shears. I think it needs to be a bit more, a bit more even. Cutting it down so it's a bit thinner, not as dominant. Okay, I think that could work. I wonder if I just have them coming a little bit up more from where the body, where that body piece is. And then do I actually need then another piece coming over, over here perhaps? Hmm, what do you think? I wish you could tell me because I'm looking at it going, I don't know. So I think the wing piece needs to sit over the top of this, so I wonder if I will need to just cut another little piece to to run down run down the wing area. use this piece that I have but just pull a bit more off it. Maybe I'll do that. So I've got it there already and it's nicely fringed and maybe that's what I'll do. I'll put that one on last and bring that down and then have those like that. So that's my little tail there. sort of pointing so you want the tail sort of going up on an angle like that so I'm just going to arrange them so they're a bit like that I was putting them on. I can't really put them on top so that one are we happy with will that one be covered up if we do that and then this one probably just need to trim a little bit off the end of that one take that off I'll get there eventually. But I could have figured this all out and then not done it on, on video, but I'm trying a bit more to share the process of the figuring out in the hope that it helps others to um, sort of feel ready to, to give things a go and do a bit of figuring out and also learn from, learn from the process of others. Because I certainly find those videos where people are figuring things out really helpful because you get to see the, the creative process in flow. I might with this one just take these little envy pieces off, even though they are kind of holding it, holding it in shape. And then, yeah, I reckon with the stitching over the top, it will all sort of then um, then come together. With these ones, I probably need to just get them to sit a little bit a smidgeru closer when they're all at the top. And they're even have to just they have them overlapping that little that little bit more. So let's start by putting the first one, glue the first one down. Take this one off because that's going to go on last. And then I was going to put this one. So I haven't seen many good um, little bird, scrappy bird making videos like this on, on YouTube. So let me know if you've watched a good one because I'd love to see how other people um, do it. Yeah, I'm really happy with how that tail bit's looking now. And then let's just get our little extra wingy bit on. I might just shape it around a little bit so that it does just kind of curve. A little bit then we've got those nice all those nice little bits curving i think i'm going to have to give my area a little a little wipey just wipe it wipe it okay right so we're going to have it about up there where 
there's my little sketches, the guide of where I want him standing. I kind of want him with his little taily bits there. Do I think that maybe I do need to trim this little tail area a little bit? And I probably need to get rid of this extra little bit of white that's here. But otherwise, I think the white is covered apart from where the head is. Oh, and the head has actually slipped a little bit, so I probably need to just tuck a tiny bit more glue there. And I need to make sure the head covers where the, that other bit comes down to. Let's get rid of that little thread from there. Okay, I reckon we're now ready to do some stitching. What do you think it goes about there? I might just put that little little bit of glue on the back. Just to hold him. I reckon that would be pretty good. So now what are we going to use? Let's put the lid on the glue so that doesn't go dry out. And I think I've still got a little bit of white showing there. Let's just quickly chop him off. Just a little something showing there too. Okay, so thread. Let's out get ourselves a needle. Pop our needle there. And then I just grabbed a bunch of threads from my little loose thread, random sort of end of thread pieces jar. I get rid of my big scissors because I don't think I need those on the bench. So what colours do we reckon? I sort of pulled out some browns, some greys. I'll just use a single strand just to do a whole lot of little um, stitches for the breast area. Do I want to? outline that or do I want to just use a really pale I've got a white over here actually is it a pure white sort of an off white but I think that would be okay could be I think it's almost white I think this is one of my partner's mum's threads that she gave me it's funny when people find out that you're into sort of stitching crafts you end up inheriting a lot of lovely vintage goodies people start giving you so she also gave me those tapestry tapestry walls okay let's get a knot a little knot at the end there and let's then start by and hopefully I might not have to put too many into the white breast area because I don't really I suppose they they, they are there are feathers there and in fact I think the pictures I was looking at um, yeah, you could sort of see it wasn't like they weren't perfectly white. So in fact, actually, I'm going to just do some little seed stitches. Um, so seed stitches where you just pop up and down. I don't want to catch that or bring up the green. Otherwise, it'll look like our robin's been rolling around in the, the grass. So yeah, I think I can just do some little seed st stitches to just attach attach him down. Hopefully we're still in focus. I know sometimes when you bring stuff up it um, makes it go out of focus till it works out where the where the work is. This end just turning up all the time is annoying me a little bit. But I'm definitely finding it really handy with this um, project to have a thicker base um, to sew on. I'm not getting any of those sort of yeah I guess puckering Problems and it's just giving me yeah a good good base in which to do my my stitching into. So I think ultimately I could put quite a few little um, stitches through this this breast area, but for now for this video because I don't want it to go on forever, um, we might just do some little little ones and then we can always come back and add add further ones. But I can show you another time. But yeah, really happy to have my little, to have the um, sort of, not the permission, I mean, we can always do whatever we want in our, our works, but the fact that there's not going to be a bird bird prompt 
um, in this project meant that I could get on and add this robin, which was the first thing that came to mind when I was thinking of um, yeah, the secret, secret door, etc. Now I wonder what we do around the, the breast area. I'm actually thinking I won't put any stitches in there for now, although I might ultimately just use a red and just add a few, few stitches. Maybe that's what I'll do. And the edge of this doesn't seem to be fraying, um, so I don't think I need to worry too much about doing an over stitch all the way around. But again, that's what you could do um, of just popping up just near the edge and then just putting a little stitch into the into the fabric. Popping up and then going down. Probably is actually, after saying I won't do it, I probably will proceed. It's not going to take me that long to get down this edge. The problem when you don't do things as well is you might actually forget because um, you get tied up in doing other things and then you don't actually come back and get it done. It's definitely a cooler day today, but I think it's a bit more humid um, today. I feel I've got that humid warmth about me. I'd close the window because someone had decided that um, Sunday afternoon was a good time to do the lawns, which it probably is if you don't have fun crafting to, to do. Um, and so yeah, it was a bit noisy outside. But I think I'm tempted soon to, to get the window open and enjoy the, the cooler breeze. And so the whole idea with this scrappy bird is you actually want to have those little frayed edges and um, obviously you want it to hold together and not fall apart, but um, you want to enjoy the sort of textures of your, your fabric and have them create that passionation of the, the bird. So you kind of pick a bit of a colour theme, so the greys and, and browns and tops I guess I've used here, um, and then combine those together. And again with your threads you can sort of echo echo those things as well but it's a good chance because you're only needing little little bits of them it's a good chance to actually use up some of your random bits and pieces of thread if you're like me and tend to keep them just in a a bit of a jumble but um at least they're available I try and have those out in front of me so I draw down on those before getting whole new threads out chop it with my little birdie scissors These are just um, dish drying um, cloths with sort of non-stick backing, but they're padded, so they make the perfect thing to be able to stick your needles into. So I really like using them on my, my work area. Okay, I reckon we're going to use a bit of grey. Actually, what are we going to use for around the head area? Have we got something that would... That looks a bit bright, that one. How would that one look? also looks a bit bright so do we have something else in our bundle of thready tricks over here that could work okay for that area is that the same color as the one i was just looking at like oh that's actually got a, that one's a bit more greeny colored or maybe it's a variegated one possibly it's got a little, definitely got a little bit more greeny greeny in it i reckon that one should should be okay around the head area. I'm continuing to enjoy watching everyone's videos and also seeing all the great photos on the Roxy Journal Stick Tree Facebook group. If you've got videos leave me a, a comment below and um, I'll check, check yours out um, if I haven't already. I tend to search on the, the hashtag and um, yeah, check out other people's that way. I'm just going to, for the head, do the little over stitch. Eventually we'll also need to do a little, little eye as well. So 
seen some great birds as well where they almost um, do the over stitching around it to look like um, it's drawn but sort of with a very not a messily drawn but with the lines um, sort of overlapping outside the design of where the fabric is so one day I'd like to try doing one of those birds as well but I thought I'd start with my scrap my um, scruffy bird with defined edges first and then I can graduate to sort of creating that drawing effect with with thread and also because the background of this one's a little bit darker as well anyway. And I'm still on camera. I'm just going to bob down and have a look. Yes, there goes the chair again. So, so far in all the gardens that people have been creating, I've seen a rabbit, I've seen dogs and cats. I um, don't know if I've seen any other birds in the, the down the garden path gardens as yet, but I'm sure we'll, we'll get, some, get some animals. I can't remember what it was, what animal Sarah had in her video. Was it a rabbit? Oh my goodness. I swear, sometimes my brain is like a sieve. I do think the whole sort of um, the whole adjustment to the COVID lifestyle and the uncertainty that we had for such a long period of time, and we had a lot of lockdowns here in in Melbourne. Um, I do think that whole sort of cycle and um, being worried about things and has impacted. Yeah, I think a lot of our um, our memories and our ability that long-term memory maybe it's just a function of getting older as well who knows but I did notice a difference over that period um, I've been very fortunate not to have had that COVID um, so it's definitely not long COVID affecting me which I definitely know people that have been affected both by long COVID and also post COVID syndrome that I didn't know about till I had a friend um, diagnosed with that so it's interesting the world seems to have sort of yeah bobbled bobbled along continued along people back to traveling traveling the globe which is lovely where people can actually catch up with family it was yeah touching to hear um, about Rachel's trip back to back to Australia to see Sarah and all the family I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall at their little stitching and other crafting sessions it's a very crafty family with Rachel and Sarah and um, Juju with her amazing sewing works. So I'm just stitching here along the edge of the head just with that um, over stitch. And yeah, I think I will outline that robin redbreast area with um, the red thread with little over stitches as well because even though um, I want to have just that blush of red. I don't think the overstitching will be a huge problem and I've got some red, red threads handy there as well. So normally I'd switch off and go away and do the stitching um, off camera but I thought no this one I'll show you from the, the get-go warts and, warts and all as we say. Hopefully I don't prick my finger. Hopefully I don't swear. Sometimes I just find a bad word slips out when I give myself a particularly painful finger stab with the needle, which obviously can't do on camera. And so the Yuhu glue I find because it does sort of um, stick quickly and it's not particularly um, sort of thick or anything, it doesn't create any issues for stitching through it. This is actually quite a thick um, linen blend I think it is this talky one that I've used for the head um, so that's thicker to go through but this needles not having not having any issues which is good now I might just now get a bit more of the little wingy pieces stitched down as well 
And then they are that taupey colour as well. I can use a bit of that. But I also don't mind on the wings. I'm thinking I'll use some more contrasting thread as well. But we might just get some little, might do a few little longer stitches just to hold that wing area down to where the, the head area is. Do the same there. I'm actually wondering if I do just need to give it a little, little trim. Well, roll that up. Yeah, I think that looks a bit better. And then we're going to just pop up here. I think if you use the sort of the same thread from a different area area on it it'll just give it that more cohesive look and look like little feathers scattered along so I'm going to finish using this little torpy thread stitching down the wing which will also just help that bit to stay in place um, if the glue is starting to fade a bit in the gluing now you can get proper fabric glues and I've got a Mod Podge fabric glue but again I just find the you who glue um, to work okay like when I'm doing junk journals or paper projects like laces and things I can just glue onto the paper and then stick the lace on top it's much easier to actually do it that way than to try and get the glue onto the lace and have it all end up goopy as I think you can see me do in one of my um, videos where I'm making a compendium to hold stamps and, and stickers um, so I show you the how not to do it and then I can tell you about the how to do it in something separate. Now I wanted that little bit of tail to tuck under so I'm just going to do that for now. Um, yeah, we'll just tie this one off at this end while we've got enough thread to do that. One knot should be fine there I think. little loosey bits there but that's fine and what color will we use next that one's relatively long enough but we get a few more stitches in should we use that no that looks a bit yellowy maybe some gray some lighter gray could be nice and that's a nice long thread so we can get some decent holding stitches in now where did I put my needle I bet you can see my needle. Ah, there's my needle. You couldn't see it either. It was hiding under our little vegetation area. So I know a lot of people are struggling with this project because we're just getting the prompts every two weeks and you don't know what's coming at all. Um, so I'm kind of glad I've gone with the vertical sort of wall hanging approach because it means I can work on sort of each piece well this is almost like two pieces in in one um, I can have a broad idea of where I think they're going to be in my final layout but I don't have to stitch them together yet and I can also either create an entirely new section for each prompt or if we got something that I thought added well to this um, like a tree or something or some leaves or something I could actually just add them to this piece as well so I'm not feeling um, sort of yeah as stressed or as anxious about um, in fact I'm not feeling at all stressed and anxious I'm actually really enjoying the fact that we don't know the prompts because I just find that's really stretching and giving me that creative challenge that I actually enjoy um, and I also don't think I'm as good with really structured um, projects so I don't really feel attracted to buying um, other people's passions for example and slavishly following following those I like to get inspired by my materials and by books by um, like in this case just by the secret garden and wanting to create my own little um, creation of the secret garden my own little world made out of fabric um, that evokes that for me so again, I'm just running up and putting little um, grey stitches in and you can barely even sort of, yeah, see them, but they are just adding a little bit of texture on top of the fabric. And the most important thing is they're stitching us down to the 
to the background. So, and yeah, just using the UH glue means that um, I don't have lots of loose pieces of thread that I'm trying to hold down. Um, but then, yeah, as I said, you want to get your stitches in so that you don't, um, so that they don't start falling off because the UH, UH glue might start to lose a bit of its stick. Um, depending what fabrics you're sticking to, yeah. Certainly paper to fabric seems to stick really solidly and really well. Um, and so now I'm just putting some little stitches over the outside. That one was a bit bigger, but that's okay. I'm happy with that because they would have little feathers sticking out. Um, I don't know what the different parts of a feather, is it a vein down the centre of the feather? I'm not sure. Um, and then what the, I guess they're just bits of feather. What those little sticky out bits at the sides are. So this will just hold the edges down now and give us just that little bit of extra texture. I think this bird is going to be one that I can sort of, yeah, even after today's little stitching, who knows, I might come back to it and just keep adding adding more stitches to it because I, yeah, I really like that, that scrappy and that variation of colours and, and textures. But I'll get the basics done today so that you have enough to go away and sort of, yeah, make yours and know the, the different stitches to do. And if you don't feel that you can draw a bird, you can, if you've got a printer, you could print out a picture of a bird and then um, hold it up against your window and trace it using your friction pen onto some thin fabric and use that as your base. Um, or if you can print on fabric, you could, you could do it that way. Um, or you could put your fabric over, if you've got an iPad or something and just lightly sketch with your friction pen over the, the fabric um, to get it that way. So yeah, you don't have to be able to draw. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're really just using it as the base. You might even be able to um, yeah, just kind of create your bird on, on straight onto the fabric um, without even needing um, a base sort of drawing. I felt I needed that just to feel confident that I'd get the right sort of dimensions. Now I'm using this light grey just to put some little stitches into where I had the brown, which again will just bring everything together, I think. So keep going down. Yeah, no, I haven't done any stitches there, have I? So we need to get that bit down. Yeah, so maybe down the bottom I do use the same green, but that textured green and couch that down, because maybe that can be like grass. I was thinking more grey, grey-brown, but maybe that will be fine. And then I'll have to just do the little legs. I think I've got some black here, so I think we'll be able to do the legs in black. Hopefully I can get the legs to look right. I it hard to get the um, needle up through where the fabric is because I keep hitting the sort of fringy area so I think I'll need to come more from the middle there I'll put some little longer stitches down so coming through quite a few layers of fabric there including that um, more linen-y piece so it is a little bit a little bit thicker still going quite well Hopefully I'm still on camera, in focus, up the right way, all those important things. So another working week this week. Last week was a, a short week, Monday to Wednesday, and then a a public holiday and then Friday back working so I was so confused Wednesday felt like it was Saturday and then Friday felt like Monday again and then it, when it was Saturday I thought it was Sunday so a bit of a bonus really to have now Sunday again and time for stitching which is lovely because as I said I'd spent quite a bit of time sorting all my boxes of fabrics into plastic tubs for better better organization better saving and sorting 
Um, what it did make me realise is I just have so much fabric, so I really need to curtail bringing any more secondhand fabrics into the house. But it's kind of tricky when you see nice little bits at the at the um, reverse art truck or um, the purveyor of reclaimed fabrics. Um, Melanie has yeah gorgeous little remnants of reclaimed bits of fabric that I find myself tempted to buy in vintage so-and-so, so S-E-W so-and-so on Instagram. I've picked up a few pieces, a few, um, from her. So as I say, yeah, I really do like to use the reclaimed fabrics wherever I can, and also the sewing layer is a big weakness of mine as well, although so far today I haven't even checked their website for their Sunday release. If I don't look, then I can't, can't buy because yeah, I've got so much, so much stuff. And a lot of this, as you can see, you just need so little um, to do your stitching. So you just don't need a lot. And I would like to, yeah, to the extent that I can use what I have. But it is that thing of that fear of missing out when you're looking at um, yeah, vintage or recycled fabrics. And yeah, you're not gonna find them in the shops. You can't just pop out a month later. Um, they're limited quantities. Often they're just one piece. Um, but still, I've got so much to, to work with. And I was trying to ponder what I'm going to take away on an upcoming holiday because we'll be getting a prompt while I'm on holidays. Um, and I obviously can't bring my entire stash, so I'm going to have to do a cut down, cut down version. So our little birdie is pretty well, I think, maybe I just need to do a few more stitches up here because I haven't done those ones. Let's do that. And then I think we will work on the legs oh we need to do the eye the legs and the little grassy area and so our key on how are we going for time oh 56 minutes that's going to be that is quite a long time so we'll have to work fast i do totally understand if you've jumped through parts of it to get up to this stage but i did want to just share because i know there's people that are watching um, my channel who might be a bit newer to um, stitching as well or haven't done slow stitch so I just wanted to make it this an approachable um, me trialing something giving you a bit of a tutorial in how to do it um, and you can see what does and doesn't work for me and then hopefully give it a go yourself so I think we'll do that for now and even if I come back and do some stitches later they'll just be um, holding down ones because I think I probably actually haven't been all the way up here either. I might just put one or two in just to make sure it doesn't fray. And so you're always keeping your stitches relatively short on the front apart from where you want to create that sort of um, sense of a bigger, bigger feather um, but then you're moving further up on the back and I'll show you the back in just a moment. I can't believe I've been talking to you for an hour. This whole slow stitching gig, like the, the time just flies, honestly, when you're having so much fun. I think as I said to someone, I think it was Corinne, the most fun you can have sitting down really. Truly is fun. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop stitching there because otherwise I'd just keep stitching around and around. So as you can see on the back, we're moving along a fair bit between our stitches and then on the front, we're just using those shorter stitches. So I have managed to stitch most of it down. I'm just gonna do some little knots at the back, running the, like nipping the fabric with my needle and then just tying a knot by looping it through and pulling it tight. There we go. Oops, and my little yeah, red breast was just popping up a little bit, but I will attend to that later. Oh, do we, we probably, no, we do need to attend to it now because you'll want to see that bit. So let's quickly, let's quickly do that. Let's quickly get some little bits around. And then we might just get the legs on and then the other bit might need to wait, I'm not sure. Let's see how we go. Okay, so let's just pop up here. Put a little, oops, and I put 
my knot from the back wasn't overly sectional. Just as I'm passing the thread through the mesh, it is um, slipping a little, little bit. I just want to hold our meshy bits in place. Just holding our messy, messy bits like that in place. There we go. There we go, Bobo. I'm sorry, I was just talking to my, <laughs> my dog. I could hear him downstairs and I said, there you go, Bobo, that's his nickname. I could hear Dad talking to him. I probably thought, who's Bobo? Looks like they're going to go out for a bit of a walk. I can hear the, the garage going up. He's probably getting a bit tetchy wanting to wanting to go out for a walk. Okay, um, so I can probably come back and do some further little um, stitches along this side if I need to, but this might be enough to just um, hold it down for now. So I'm just going to take that pry knot with that needle. There. Okay. Cut that thread. That tail's a bit long. Great. Now for the legs. How do our legs need to look? I think that's a bucky colour. That's probably the. I'll probably use the full thickness for this. I'm going to use a slightly bigger needle just so that it's easier to easier to thread. Now I don't think the friction marker would really show on this fabric so I think I'm just going to have to have a go at um, putting the legs where I think they should be. I did have my legs drawn well on this fabric. I don't know if this will help me at all just to work out where to start my legs and where to, where to stop them. So my leg needs to come down about, so I need to pop up about there. Let's do that. So I always get kind of like, oh... I don't think I'll get the proportion quite right. It's just de-threaded itself, but that's okay. Legs are hard things. See, the feathers, you kind of have the fabric helping you to blend them, but the legs, I need to get them looking, looking right. So here's my little, my little drawing again. Popped up there. Oops, did I come in the wrong spot? Where's my thread? Where's my thread? I think about there, coming down on a bit of an angle, about that far. You can barely see them anyway, so I don't think it's going to matter too much because I think they'll be all kind of covered by the by the stuff. So I'm not going to get as stressed as I was about getting them perfectly perfect. Now that's kind of the whole thing. We don't have to get this stitching perfectly perfect. And worst case, if it's not exactly how we want it, then we can... We can unpick it and redo it. So I'm going to put its three little claws here and then one little claw out the back. Yeah, you can barely see it. Barely see the legs. And then the other leg is more coming out from coming out from about here. I think so. And coming down on a similar sort of angle down to a similar sort of level. Sorry, that edge keeps flipping over, so you probably can't actually even see what I'm what I'm doing. But it's yeah, it is very dark down this bottom area of the fabric, so you can barely barely see barely see the little feet. I think possibly I need to maybe have them a bit closer down here, and then one out the back as well here. Looks kind of like my little picture. Just going to tie a knot, and then let's just add.
then let's just take our creamy stuff. Maybe for the purpose of this, I might not stitch it down because oh, we could do you stitch one or two pieces down. Don't want any of those. Those ones, they're right. We don't need quite as much. I think I'll just have it so it's just sort of covering, covering the, fore, the foreground. Yep, the foreground. And maybe a few more pieces along here. So it's going to look a bit like that. And all I'm going to do is get some green thread. Sorry, the chair is really squeaking. So, yep, this is just a, a thread again from my partner's mum. And I can go back to just using my smaller needle. And we're just going to couch down, um, which means you come up through the fabric and then you stitch down to hold a thicker um, Piece of like it could be a piece of wool or something like that in place um, rather than actually bringing this wool through the fabric so we're just because we want this just wool or this edging stuff to just sit on top um, we're going to come up through the fabric with a knot behind it and then we're just going to pop down to hold it in place and try and not capture the whole corner in it and so I'm going to have to do this all over the piece but I'll just show you a couple and then um, I'll do that off camera because you don't need to watch me doing that it's going to take quite a while to get all of this couch down in its random fashion so we're just popping up through the fabric capturing um, what's on top and holding it in place by stitching from one side over the top of it um, bringing the thread down the other side of it so that it holds it in place so that's going to be how that's going to look um, and then we also need to do the little eye of the bird which I did forget while well, I had the thicker black or oh, I use maybe I'll use a grey this one's already got a little knot in the end and we might just do a little French knot I think and then I get it through the needle some of it through the needle. Did I get all of it through the needle? I don't think I did. Okay, now I've managed to make it all minky. Minky, minky. Okay, let's try. Take two. Okay, let's go. Now, where is our little eye going to go? Will it pop in about? Where is it on my little sketch? just below where the sort of bumpy, bumpy bit of the, the hood is. Is that the right place? I think it will be. Again, if I don't, don't love it, I can always, um, probably two little French knotties. So I'm just doing a French knot there. All of this stuff that I haven't couched down is getting a bit in the way, but that's okay. And then let's go through. Let's try not to capture all the green stuff. Right, now he's got his little eye. So, um, we can just quickly tie that one off. There we go. The French knots tend to hold anyway, so I'm not gonna worry too many knots on the back. Um, and then we just need to arrange our little, so as you can see, some bits of this where I've couched it down are being held down. Um, and then we just need to add our little key and that will be at least you'll be able to see the what it looks like almost finished albeit um, just awaiting the, the couching process so let me just get these ones on here probably as I say probably won't need quite as much texture although I do like the texture I really had fun creating the the vine texture above and then we'll put the little key which was that was my little key wasn't it yep that one I reckon we'll just sort of put it in there so it's just hiding hiding away amongst the rubble and our little robin is showing showing the way for it and in fact yeah the legs didn't matter at all because you can only just just see them and so yeah I'll be able to continue on and do some more stitches if I want to even on the body if I felt I needed it and probably yeah just finishing putting little red stitches around there 
but otherwise that is my my secret door let's start from the, the door well in fact actually we should probably start from the, the bottom so that's my little that's my little robin through to the secret door and the nest so thank you for watching everyone and have a great day I've taken enough of your time so thank you again and take care and hopefully see you next time bye everyone Thank you.